there was a really horrible protest in Marietta, California, uh, yelling at a busload of women and young children. Uh, with me now is Enrique Morones. He is the founder and executive director of Border Angels at borderangels.org. Enrique was uh, there. And, uh, Enrique, before you you, um, you tell me what your thoughts were when you saw this protest, tell us just a little bit about Border Angels uh, at borderangels.org. Uh, yes, yeah, so well, thank you for to inviting me on your show. Uh, Border Angels is an organization which I founded back in 1986. And I'm a, a U.S. citizen born in San Diego, very proud of my Mexican heritage. And what happened back in 86 was a friend of mine from El Salvador, actually, said, Enrique, I know you're always collecting things to try to help out the people in need, like the big drive we have have right now for the Central American children. How about helping the people that live where I live, in Carlsbad, California? And I said, well, that's a wealthy neighborhood. She said, no, but there's people that live in the canyon. So I started to go into those canyons, and that's how Border Angels got started, by bringing food and water to people that live in the canyons that were doing the... uh, the farming in the North County, the tomato and strawberry fields here in San Diego. And then eventually I started putting water in the desert when in 1994 the United States government put up a wall between San Diego and Tijuana, which has led to the death of more than 10,000 people. And I used to be a professional baseball at the San Diego Padres, and I was invited to a very big Spanish-language show, Sabado Gigante, in Miami. And when I came out, the host said, El Angel de la Frontera, the Border Angel. So we became known as the Border Angels. And now we have over 5,000 uh, volunteers. We're a face-based, all-volunteer, uh, 501c3. And we put water in the desert that we're going to do tomorrow. We work with the day labor community, making sure they're okay. And we work a lot with the children that are crossing, and we don't want them to die. We don't encourage people crossing, but we don't want them to die. So we work a lot with children, like we're doing right now in this campaign. We have a campaign called Operation Teddy Bear, collecting teddy bears and things for the children. And uh, so we're very active, and there's a lot of information on borderangels.org or on Facebook. So, so tell me, I mean, you were in uh, Marietta. I mean, how did you uh, uh, did you get there on that first day of protests? And, and and if so, how did you anticipate this was was going to happen? Well, we, we've been preparing for this for about three weeks because um, we started realizing what was happening in Texas with the uh, the, the the numbers doubling from last year of children from Central America, they're not, they're not coming into the country. They're turning themselves into Border Patrol agents at the border. And we, we saw that they were to capacity in, 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 uh, in Texas and then in Arizona where we were collecting things for Arizona three weeks ago. And then when I heard that they were coming to California, uh, I was not going to go to Marietta because I said it's going to be a circus up there and the last thing they need is, is that type of a, of, a, of a dog and pony show. However... A couple of national news networks called me, and they said, can you come up here? We would like you to, uh, we'd like to interview you. And I said, sure, as long as I do it away from the protesters. So I did. And after I did those two shows, which were CBS and NBC National News, I said, well, I'm going to go check it out only as an observer. So I went there on Tuesday a week ago, and I saw about 50 protesters across the street from the Border Patrol station. And I believe in freedom of speech. They have every right to be there. And even though I don't, I don't agree with what they're saying, they have the right to be expressing their opinion as long as there's not violence. And that's what they were doing. And then I recognized about half the group because half of them were the four, you know, when the Minutemen used to be around, well, those were those same people. They, they kind of travel around in a little, a little group. You know, they're members of the Federation of American Immigration Reform. And, and the other half I didn't recognize. I figured those were people from Marietta. And everything was, you know, there was a big circus, but they have that right. Then the three buses were approaching. And the three buses could have easily gone down the street because the streets were clear. But they stopped, the, the Marietta police stopped them right in front of the, the, the protesters. And I asked one of the officers, I said, what are you thinking? And he goes, oh, we got it under control. I go, people are going to get in front of the buses. And, and just in a couple of seconds later, a man with an American flag with that great flag started banging it against the bus, yelling and screaming all these racist taunts to the children. And then about 25 people joined him, and about 25 media people joined him. So you have 50 people in front of the bus screaming at these children and women, and they don't speak English, but they can understand the hate, and it brought tears to my eyes. And several media people started crying, saying that with what I said, this is the worst moment in my life in a protest. The police allowed this to happen, and these poor children, no matter how you feel about immigration or President Obama or whatever, 
these children, we got to love these children. And uh, I was just shocked and dismayed. And because of the police and the mayor of Marietta, the buses returned to San Diego where the plane had landed. And in San Diego, spontaneously, women and children received those three buses with love and song. And, and I was very moved by that. And it brought tears to my eyes. I just saw that on the news. I, I wasn't there in San Diego. Well, I was back in San Diego, but I didn't go to where the, the buses came. And uh, so it's, that's the situation we're in right now because we had another a plane come yesterday and one come two days ago. We've collected over 20 tons of, of, of donations, thanks to the good-hearted people here that have come from all over, from California. Even some came from Marietta. People came from Mexico. People came as far away from Fresno, driving six hours to deliver food and teddy bears and, and, and diapers and things. And we're in the middle of that right now. We even had a binational concert on Sunday with the San Diego Symphony on one side of the border and the Baja California Orchestra on the other side at Friendship Park, which was fantastic. And tomorrow we're going to go to a cemetery two hours from here, which is the biggest mass grave in the entire Americas, all three Americas, North, Central, and South. 650 unidentified migrants buried, including Guatemalan children, and it's in California and Hopeville. Tomorrow we're going to do, the, to do a prayer vigil there. So we're on top of this issue. Well, I mean, uh, that, that's uh, it's a bit of an antidote to that, to that just incredible outpouring of hatred we saw in Marietta. But l- let me ask you from a... From a uh, 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 Enrique, are you there? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me ask you from a, a policy standpoint. I mean, what I, I know that the Obama administration is looking for uh, money uh, in part to provide care for these children. And as far as I'm concerned, this is a humanitarian crisis. Uh, in the, in the Obama administration is seeking money to provide uh, care for these children, but they're also seeking money. To expedite the uh, due process uh, uh, process it, to determine whether or not they uh, qualify for asylum. L- let me ask you this: I mean, do you give us a sense of our ability as a country, and based upon what you know in terms of being a a focal point for the outpouring of caring for these children, give us a sense of what our capacity is to absorb these children to the extent that they don't already have family members here? Well, we have, you know, there will be challenges, of course, but uh, but we can do it. And, and as President Obama said, it is a humanitarian crisis, but I do not agree with some of the things that he's doing in the response because we need a humanitarian response. To expedite uh, the, the process, the deportation process, is not humanitarian. A lot of these children will qualify for humanitarian and asylum visas. They should be allowed to stay. Uh, some will not qualify, so they should not be allowed to stay. But let's treat them in a humane way. And what's happening with these detention facilities, which don't even have showers or beds, is not a humane way. And one of the things that we should be doing, as, as the great nation we are, is expanding our presence in Central America with our counselors. So I, if I really do have that situation where my child is going to wake up dead the next morning because the human traffickers and, and the gangs are threatening them, let them go to that embassy in El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and apply for a visa. So they don't have to take that 1,000-mile dangerous journey on top of a train through Mexico right. and then turn themselves in. That's led to more than 10,000 deaths since Operation Gatekeeper began in 1994. Two people die every day that we don't have humane policies, and now one of those two people is a child. So we need that. One of the things I do agree with, what he's, which was that he's doing with the money that he's, he's going to be getting, is having more immigration judges and attorneys. So they can see this case-by-case basis because some of the things that people don't understand is that there's no line for people to get into. When they're saying, come in the legal way, well, there is no legal way. There's no line. It's not a long line. There is no line. You do not qualify if you don't make a certain income. So you don't qualify. It's not like you have to wait a long time. There is no line. Uh, but this is a country of laws. Yes, most countries are. But, but, but when you have laws in this land like child labor, women can invoke slavery, those are laws in this country of laws. So some laws are immoral, and two people dying every day is immoral. This is not a partisan issue. This is something that both sides of the aisle need to work on, because we have a greater country than what we saw in Marietta by a few people. That doesn't represent this flag, this country, or our people. And we need to show the world that by having compassion. And even though, like I've said several times before, if these children were Canadian, we wouldn't be having this interview. Right. And, and that's, I, I know. Yeah, we need to change that. I, I, I agree. 
Uh, we're talking to Enrique Morones. He is the executive director of Border Angels. You can check him out at borderangels.org. So, Enrique, do you have a sense of in what what does a child have to prove? I mean, it seems to me uh, that if a child is willing uh, or a family is willing to spend what amounts to, um, uh, you know, a, a year's worth of, of earning, if not more, a years of savings to get a child to be transported by a, a smuggler or to have walked on themselves. I mean, that to me seems like a, a, a prima facie case that these children are escaping something very bad and that they perceive to be in grave danger. What does a child have to prove to qualify for asylum? In fact, Enrique, you know what? I want to take a break so that we can. Can you hang with me for one more segment? Absolutely. Okay, all right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to find out exactly what it takes uh, to for a child to qualify for asylum in this country when we know that they have had to suffer an, an immense amount to get to that border and turn themselves into that uh, that border agent. They're obviously running from something, and we know that these are literally some of the most dangerous countries in the world that they are they are running from. When we come back, we will ask Enrique Morones of Border Angels at borderangels.org what it takes for a child to be qualified for asylum in this country. We've got to take a break. We'll be right back. I will take your phone calls in just a few moments, folks, at 800-783-7412. The Sammy Cam is in effect. You can see me in all my glory as I speak into this microphone at SammyCamLive.com. On the phone, I still have with me Enrique Morones. He is the founder and executive director of Border Angels. You can check them out at BorderAngels.org. Uh, Enrique, just remind folks, I mean, in general, what is the mission of Border Angels and, and, and what is the perspective that you have on immigrants who come to this country? It may, it may go without saying, but, you know, in this day and age, people need to be reminded of immigrants who come to this country uh, simply seeking a, a, a better life. That's right. So uh, Border Angels, our mission statement is very clear. If I was hungry, did you give me to eat? If I was thirsty, did you give me to drink? If I needed shelter, did you provide shelter? And uh, so we do all three of those things. We're a 501c3 volunteer group. I founded it back in 1986, and uh, we're very active in, in working on human rights. We have a very big campaign that we've had for a long time that we send uh, uh, PSAs down to the Latin American countries, warning them of the dangers of crossing and telling them not to cross because two people die every day crossing and getting into this country the only way they can, which is through the desert and the trunk of a car trying to cross a canal, et cetera. So it's a really sad situation. And, and as you were mentioning at the end there, we need to remind the audience that before we were us, we were them. Except that when it was right. them, the people that are listening to this show, there was no legal versus illegal. People just came. These laws about not being able to come have greatly intensified in the last 10 years. And uh, it's something that people seem to forget because it's easy to say, come in the legal way. Uh, we, should, we shouldn't have to be worried about these people. Well, this is a great country, but we have great responsibility. Well, we have 4.5% of the world's population, and we consume more than half of the world's illegal drugs. That causes a cancer in other countries. Well, when we as a nation consume more than 30% of the world's natural resources, that's not fair. We need to practice what we preach as a nation. The whole world saw what happened in Marietta, and that is not who we are. We need to show the world who we really are and have humane laws and the most uh, undocumented people, by the way, do not come into this country. There's 250 million undocumented people in the world today, according to the United Nations. We have an 11, we have 11 and a half million of them. Most are going elsewhere. So let's help those other countries so that the people will stay where they want to stay in their home country. But it needs to be secure. They need to have uh, an opportunity for employment. These other countries have a responsibility, no doubt. But the U.S. policies have greatly impacted their current situation. Right. Now let's help them. And 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 I I think that it, it comes as a surprise to most people. Uh, you know, you you made the point in the last segment 
um, uh, these kids, um, these uh, these adults are told, uh, wait in line. But but there is no line for them. We are basically trapping. Uh, you know, we we are. Uh, th- there is no opportunity for them to come into this country. And I think your idea of allowing uh, visas to be issued at these consulates in these countries that are uh, racked with violence right now, and I would agree with your assessment that very much as a function of our, fallen, our foreign policy for years and in, in some instances our trade policies as well. But let me ask you this. When a child goes through this process, one of these uh, children uh, from Central America who have uh, walked up to the border, have turned themselves into a border agent seeking asylum, what what do they have to prove to be eligible for asylum in this country? It's very difficult. It's a very difficult situation, even though they might have the most valid claim. Most asylum cases, the overwhelming majority, are turned down. And, uh, you know, because they say, my life's in danger. Uh, this drug gang came to my house and said they were going to kill my family if I didn't participate in the drug trade. Things like that. It's very difficult to prove. Very difficult. Even though you might have had already several family members killed. So in most cases, those asylum cases are rejected. So the people feel desperate. And the, and the people that are promoting the fact that these people should go north for a visa, it's not the government in Central America. It's the smuggling operation. The human traffickers, the organized crime, they're the ones promoting this, this, this false, uh, uh vision that if it, if it gets to the United States, they're going to get a visa. I mean, the humans are about the only ones that get, get to do that, and, and that needs to be looked at. But, but, uh, so the, with the desperate times, when, you, when you're, when you're in such a desperate situation, you're hoping for anything. So if somebody gives you a little bit of that hope, even though it's a smuggler, they'll take it. And that's why, you know, like you and I, you know, we could never fathom turning our kids over to somebody that, that we don't know, uh, because that's the only way out, or they feel that's the only way out. When President Obama is tucking in his daughters to bed tonight, and they ask him, are we helping those children? He's got to give them an, a, a, an honest answer. And as far as right now, right now we're not helping them. We need to be able to have them in a, in a humane type of a facility, give them some support. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. And be very clear about what the policies are and have more presence in those home countries to help those economies and their security, but also so they could apply for a visa, and it wouldn't be so difficult to get that asylum visa. We're all over it when we see these issues with other communities. Why not the people that are coming from south of the border? They should be given the opportunity as well. Enrique Morones, uh, he is the executive director of Border Angels. You can get more information at borderangels.org. Enrique, thank you so much for your time today, and Thank you so much for the work that you're doing, that you're, you're recognizing, uh, simply recognizing. It seems so simple to recognize that these kids are human beings. Uh, and there is a simply a humanitarian response that is necessary in these situations. And I appreciate the work you're doing. Likewise, God bless you. And uh, anytime, happy to come on your important show. Thank you. All right, folks, I'll take your phone calls, 800-783-7412. Can you tell me that these kids, these kids should not be given any care whatsoever? We'll take a break. Give me a call, 800-783-7412. Sammy Cam is in effect at SammyCamLive.com. <laughs> 